Make sure to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. morning with the rain and the storms and again the possibility of flash flooding bubbling up so let's talk about what's going on you see it here we've got our frontal boundary it's going to slowly move south and eastward through a an environment that's going to become increasingly unstable unstable as we head through the afternoon and get some um, daytime heating so we're going to continue with this rain and the chance for storms we've got multiple different um, possibilities that are going to be a problem so let's talk about what we're going to see as we move through the day there are already seeing some flash flooding issues popping up. That's all of those green polygons, the flash flood warnings. We've actually had some um, water rescues overnight in portions of Tennessee. We've had some school closings in portions of um, Memphis or in portions of Mississippi and Tennessee. So here's what we're looking at. Tuscaloosa, Birmingham, you're now included in that flash flood warning and that is until 1145 local time. And we also have some more flash flood warnings for cities like Cartersville and Rome. That's until 215 local time. So we have hours and hours of this left because we have hours and hours of rain left. You can see that rain shield slowly moving southeast. Now, generally, we're seeing these kind of this whole uh, area push south and east, but the storms themselves are going to be kind of following this trajectory of moving a little bit off to the northeast. So we've got the heavy rain. We've got the chance for storms and all of that's going to result in the risk for flooding. Alex. And Thursday is not going to be any fun. We're talking about chilly temperatures on Thursday with wind gusts way up there. You're going to have a wind chill factor by Thursday. That's for sure. So in D.C., your average high should be in the lower 60s for today. We're in the mid 60s, but the bottom's going to drop out and highs Thursday and Friday only in the 40s. Still a bit below average by Saturday. I think Thursday is going to be the day where we're really feeling it because those winds are going to be so gusty behind that frontal boundary. So for today, ahead of the frontal boundary, you'll notice we've got this in Influx of warmth and moisture coming off the Atlantic. That's bringing us that moisture that we have to work with as that front moves through, but that's also moderating our temperatures. But watch what happens as we move through the night tonight and into Thursday. You see it. It's the blue blob of the cold front impact that moves across the Northeast by Thursday at 5 p.m. It's 33 in Burlington, 48 in NYC, 32 in Pittsburgh. But you're going to have to knock a couple degrees off that because it's going to feel colder. Friday morning, this is what it's looking like. It just makes me like chilly thinking about it. It's April, guys. It's not supposed to be like this. Well, it is kind of sometimes you see this, but still it's below average. That's the point. Mid 20s in Buffalo and Pittsburgh and Burlington below freezing in DC Friday morning. That cold air surging south behind this cold front. A place like Atlanta, you're going from 70 degrees today. Beautiful yesterday to you better grab a scarf by the time you wake up Friday morning. Alex situation. On this Saturday on a new episode of World's Deadliest Weather, historic wildfires blaze trails of destruction across the Australian landscape. Firefighters are caught in hellish firestorms. Take system lifting uh, through really kind of uh, off the coast of New England at this point, lifting near the, the Bay of Maine. We've got where we see the warmer temperatures. I'm going to finger quote warmer because it's still pretty chilly. Uh, we've got the rain, but where we've been able to get the atmosphere column cooled enough, we've got that snow coming down. Now you may look at this and say, well, it's 34 in Burlington. How are we getting the snow? Well, we've just got a very thin warm layer at the surface, but we're definitely seeing some of that uh, snow hack up in the elevations, especially especially wintry mix in Albany, Boston. You're just getting some rain and we've got some breezy winds to go along with this as well. So here's what's going to happen. The center of low pressure, it continues to pull away, but it pulls away kind of slowly. We're still getting some of that lake effect snow coming off of Lake Erie and Lake Ontario, thanks to those uh, winds coming across the relatively cooler waters or the relatively warmer waters of the lake. Here's what we're looking at in terms of snow still to come. You'll notice just a couple inches, mainly across the northern portions of Vermont and New Hampshire, and then up through northern portions of Maine as well. Now here's part of the problem. We've got this flood watch in effect because we've got warmer temperatures relatively and heavy rain. So that's going to lead to some rapid snow melt, which is going to lead to rising rivers and moving ice that could cause some um, ice jam flooding as well. So Clayton Lake through Caribou, uh, you're going to need to watch out for the possibility of that. We've also had some pretty nice lake effect snow showers there coming off of Lake Michigan, places like South Bend and Benton Harbor. You guys have been getting in on some of that lake effect snow. We're not going to be quite done with the impacts of the lake effect snow either as you get some of that colder air mixing in with some of the moisture that's going to get drained out as this um, air moves over the Appalachians as well. So a few snow flurries in the forecast across the Great Lakes region and even down into portions of the Mid-Atlantic.
we have seen just copious amounts of rain, especially across the state of Tennessee, across northern portions of Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia. The oranges and reds that you see here, 5 to 8 inches in the orange, 8 to 12 inches in the red. Nashville reporting more than 10 inches in the past seven days. That's more than 8 inches above average, or they ended March more than 8 inches above average in terms of the rainfall they should typically see. So take a look at this. These are the river gauges in flood stage. Now you see a couple red moderate stage there sprinkled in one in major stage but watch what it, we expect to happen in the next five days as all of this kind of runoff continues to make its way into the river basins we're expecting more rivers to go into minor and moderate flood stage across the mississippi river valley the tennessee valley as well and here's part of the problem the soil moisture is well above average in places like lexington down through knoxville memphis chattanooga for you guys as well now the great news for a place like nashville that's trying to uh get things back up to speed after all that flooding that we saw over the weekend. Well, you guys have a dry stretch ahead. Now the temperatures a little bit on the cold side for the next couple days, but it will get better. And by the end of the weekend, you're back in the lower 70s. And so that is what we need right now, Paul. We need a little drier weather for places like Nashville destruction and something many people that they don't think about until it's too late. In 2022, hailstorms made the list of billion dollar weather disasters. When it comes to your home, you shouldn't take chances with hail and wind. Meteorologist Alex Wilson shows us how to be prepared. Into a visual form to help you understand a little bit. So you see that video that we just saw, you heard it, you could see the intensity. Here is where that camera was located. And as you look at our scale up here, the camera located somewhere in between EF0, EF1, damage. But as you get closer to the center of the tornado's path where we're seeing that EF3, EF4 damage, look at the swath of land that was covered in this EF3 damage. West Side Baptist Church there, Unity Baptist Church kind of just on the fringe of that. And that is uh, still just incredible amount of damage that we saw even outside of the main path. You can see here the path length nearly 40 miles long from just to the west of Franklin to Tyrone. And at max width, it was more than a mile wide. Just absolutely mind-blowing, Paul. But it wasn't just Georgia, of course, that seen those tornadoes last month.